Well, look, I have to tell you, this is the first time I've been to Picnic, okay? And I'm amazed by what's going on here. I'm ashamed I didn't know about this before. There's just a huge number of people, a huge number of ideas. I already got my benefit, okay? I sat with two guys who are, what, 20 years younger than me, who are looking at different aspects of the same problem, and I found out that we share, share some parts of analysis. They've had some ideas I haven't had. They're looking at things I didn't know about, so that's already great. I mean, the day is already into the gravy zone, if you see what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, wait, there is no secure way forward. I've been doing investigative journalism since, oh, let's say 1978, I think. Okay, it's never been secure, but I always had a job. I always tell my students that. If you know how to investigate, you'll always have a job because there's always somebody who needs to know what went on. Okay, and there's always somebody to whom it matters so much that they'll enable you to live while you do it. Okay, so that's, that's not secure. You have to hustle but you can live doing what you love if you love to investigate. What's happening now is that the locus of this work, one locus of this work, and I believe a growing locus, is moving out of the news industry and into stakeholder groups. It's moving into communities of practice and interest. It's moving into groups like Greenpeace, Human Rights Watch. It's moving into industries, certain industries that want to know what's happening and what's and how they can respond to it. This is where the movement is going and this movement will continue to expand. I'm not sure the news industry is going to expand again for quite a while. The fundamental goal of investigation has always been to change the world. Okay, and that is not an objective goal. That is not a neutral stance. You're saying, I want to know the truth so I know what to do. Okay, so that's where the objectivity comes in because if you don't know what the truth is, you can't change reality. You cannot change reality if you are fighting with an illusion. You become Don Quixote, okay? And instead of turning the windmill, you're tilting with the windmill. Okay, so you have to understand what reality is if you want to change it. But the desire to change it is not an objective desire. It's a subjective decision. Okay. And I believe that's the core of investigative journalism. I'm not sure I would call it advocacy journalism, okay? I would call it, how would I call it? I would certainly call it com committed or engaged journalism. It's funny, that's a very French term. I've lived in France for 28 years. The French used to talk about uh, engagé, engaged journalism. I think it's journalism that has to be dedicated to making people's lives better, okay? Whether it's an advocacy for a specific cause, I don't think so. The, the cause that's being advocated is to change the world and to make it a little better. Okay, one approach is the foundation approach that uh, comes out of Chuck Lewis's work in Washington uh, with uh, the Center for Public Integrity, and which gave rise to ProPublica and a number of other institutions, the Center for Investigative Reporting, which are largely foundation-driven. I personally, I admire the work these guys do, it's great work, but I don't think it's the only model we can have because they're giving the work away. I was always an independent, a freelancer, you know? I sold my work. I was always able to sell my work, but I don't want a competitor who's giving it away for nothing, okay? I consider that unfair competition. And I consider it unfair competition for the young people I train as well. Okay? Somebody should be paying for this. But I believe that publics, communities, will pay for this, that we can create media where we can monetize this work, where we can exchange it for services we need, such as space, legal assistance, as well as get cash in, in return for projects, in return for use of our data, in return for counsel, and in return for published product that advertisers can tie into as well. There's no reason we can't do these things. What I would like to see people doing, and I say this to people and they get very worried, is I would like to see them going after the Berlusconi lookalikes who are creating media that are totally biased and whose purpose is to confuse, 
and uh, misinform people. These media are multiplying all over Europe. They are a tremendous danger to the public dialogue, and no one is criticizing them. With rare exceptions, the uh, Romanian Center for Public no, pardon me, the Romanian Center for Investigative Journalism did a uh, excellent investigation on uh, the people who are taking over the media in Romania. We should have more projects like that, and they should be ongoing, and they should be in every country.